Hey everybody, welcome to my new tutorial series on Game Maker Studio 2. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add basic 8 directional movement into your RPG game. So, assuming that you are new to Game Maker Studio, you should know that sprites, objects, and rooms, these three things, are the most fundamental and important things to make a video game. You will probably see this window, and this is where everything takes place workspace 1. You can add more, but it's not really important to do that. These are just the buttons to export the game, run the game, save the game, and game settings. And speaking of settings, first of all, go to your options, go to main, and change your set game's frame per second settings to 60 FPS. It's just a little bit smoother. So, first of all, start by creating a sprite. Let the sprite be called SPR player, because I'm going to give make the sprite for my player. Now what is a sprite? You know that I'm gonna start with rooms. Rooms are basic places, which uh, basic sceneries, okay? This is what your end game user will see. We are going to add every object, every player, enemy, and background in this area, okay? It's the most important area for our adventure. You can say that. Next up we have the objects. On objects are just the entities or the player, the enemy, and uh, everything like that, just, they just come in objects, okay? They are just placed around rooms. And the sprites are the picture or the face of an object, like how the object should look and the animations of an object, like the player running animation, the jumping animation, enemies animations, all come into sprites. Sprites. So, first we have, have yet created a sprite and we, are going, we named it SPR player. This is where you can set the sprite uh, size of your sprite. I'm just gonna keep it at 64 by 64. It's defined. You need to ignore these things. These are not important right now. And this collision mask, you also need to ignore that right now. First of all, set this to middle center. This origin is now set to middle because of that. And that means that now, if you ask about the one uh, one fixed position of this object, then it will it will give you the uh, the address of this particular point of the object. Now we, it is a player, so I'm just going to make a very basic te uh, test sprite. I'm going to take black and white, and I'm just going to draw a uh, black. This, uh, I'm just going to fill the entire square with black and I'm going to add some eyes and the mouth. Yeah, that should do it. All right. Now that you have our player ready, now we have to create an object. You see, this is not the object, this is not where we are going to code everything. This is the main thing. Let's name this object OBJ player and let's use this as a player. I'm going to set its right to SPR player because, well, it's pretty much self explanatory. And this is just edit sprite and edit image options. You can just edit the sprite with this. Collision mask, everything, just ignore everything. You just need to make sure this is on because if, of course, this is not visible, then you cannot see it. You see the variable definitions, just skip these three, this is the most important thing. This is where all the coding and drag and drop thing will be done. You know, you, you code a video game and tell it what to do, what to specifically do, how to play. But when to run that code is, is uh, specified by different events. So there are different events in the game, uh, in Game Maker Studio 2. So those are gonna specify whether a code needs to be run only when a particular key is pressed when it's hold it down or does it need to be run all the time or does it need on loop or just uh, or does it need to be run just once so let's add two events which is going to be create event and step event the create event means that the commands and the code here will be executed only the first time then the object is created on the screen and the step event means that this code right here with the commands which are going to be here are going to be executed 60 times in one second because we set our FPS to 60. 
here Mega Studio 2 calls frames steps. Now, is because we are in drag and drop, instead of typing the code here, we are going to add the functions and variables and everything from this area, and we are going to add them in this area. Now, the first thing that you need to make sure is you are in create event. Just full screen this, and now we are going to assign some variables. Now, here we are going to do our eight directional walking for our player. So first we are going to create variables which are going to have the horizontal speed of our player, the vertical speed of our player, that's going to be VSP, and the walk speed of our player. For now set the walk speed for 5, the vertical speed for 0. It's not important, do you name this to VSP? I just call it VSP because I, if I put it v, v speed, then it is an inbuilt variable and it's pretty much like an automatic variable which does the work itself but we don't need that okay because keeping your custom variables is like having much more control of your game same goes with hsp i do not write here uh, h speed <laughs> because it will be really uh, automatic and if i just put here horizontal speed it will be really long keep these values to zero right now because your player don't does not need to be walking from the start, okay? It only needs to walk when a particular key is pressed. So, also, this relative option stands that if you click on this, instead of assigning 0 to HSP, it is going to add 0 to HSP as you can see here. And this area is where you can read every command here line by line. Alright. Now head to the step event and now we are going to assign numbers to our variables okay so if key down that means if a particular key is pressed then move your character so if key down we key right then set horizontal speed to walk speed and that is hsp and walk sp but also this only needs to be done if it is down else it does not need to be done so for that we are going to do something later on first let's just add this complete this entire area it's going to be vk left also this vk in this area just stands that this right is just a keyboard button instead of being anything else it's not a sound it's not a sprite it's a keyboard button that's why there's vk here now let me complete this quickly Now as you'll see here, if key is down VK right, set HSP to walk speed, which is pretty much self-explanatory. And if key down VK left, that means key left, key left, then set horizontal speed to minus walk speed. Now why that? Now the way that the Game Maker Studio has its positions, let me just drop my character here, is that Wait a second. Alright, so the way GameMaker Studio 2 handles positions is that you can see these two numbers right here. If I uh, take my object and get it up, the first number decreases. Oh, sorry, the second number decreases. And if I bring it down, the second number increases. Whereas if I go right and left, the first number will be increased and decreased respectively. So if I go right, it is increased. And if I go left, it is decreased. And this first number stands for x. This second number stands for y value. So when you're going right left, you are adding and subtracting x value from your position. So if, you're if you want to go right, you need to add some va a value to x. And if you're going left, you need to deduct some value from x. So that's why we change our HSP to minus walk SP because then we are going left. So our basic code is done, okay? Like we have set the uh, the variables, all right. But now the characters will move by themselves. Okay, we also need to deduct and add these values to X and Y values, as I told you in this room area. 
So for that, because we are in step event, that means this code will be executed 60 times a second. So we need to add a variable that after everything, after setting up these variables, like right, then walk sp, left, then minus walk sp, after doing everything, we need to set x to hsp. But that doesn't sound right. You don't need to set hsx to hsp. We need to add or deduct hsp to x from x. So we can click on this. It is useful now. So if hsp is minus 5, then it will be x plus minus 5, that it will be equals to x minus 5. And if that is plus 5, then x will, and then, then 5 will be added to x. So our player will move 5 pixels to the right because, of course. And then we also need to do the same thing to our y variable, just to the sp right now, because it's our variable speed. And also, it needs to be relative. Now, you see in this code there's a problem. If you go right, the walk sp will be hsp, right? Like, there's no stopping, okay? We also need to define when to stop. Else it will stop, okay? It will keep on continuing. We need to tell it when to stop. So for that, we will add another variable here, another if else statement here from this key down. That if none left and right are pressed, then set HSP back to zero. So we're going to do it here. If not, key down, key right, key left. And we're going to add here if not, key down right. Then we'll set our variable HSP to zero. We're going to do the same thing with up and down. So look, we also need to get these variables to the very end because this needs to be done after everything is done, like after all the calculations of the variables are done. All right, so now it's better. So now we can look at this area. If key right is down, set HSP to walk SP. If key left is down, then set HSP to minus walk SP. And if VK up is down, then blah, 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 blah. and if VK left is not down, then if VK right is not down, then set HSP to zero. Now, a lot of you guys who are a bit, uh, a bit experienced might say that this code is a bit clunky and congested. We'll refine it in later videos. Okay, this was just to give an idea of how to use drag and drop to the newcomers. It's going to be an easy task. Don't worry. We are just going to refine it later on. Now we need to test it. And by the end, I'm going to explain everything about the room to you. So some of you who want to maybe uh, experiment with Game Maker Studio 2 can do that later on. So uh, it's working, but it's working in a weird manner, I say. Now what's the problem? Hmm. Let's see if you guys can find the problem in this area. Did somebody see it? Alright, so I hope you guys managed to find some error in this area. And if not, try to go back and pause the video in this area. Or you can just look at it again. Alright, now I'm going to tell you what the error is. The first error is that this is set to relative. And that means earlier, walk SP was added to VSP rather than setting it. And another problem is that this is not set to not. It means earlier it was just working the opposite. So if key down and key, if both of these keys were down, then it will set re, re VSP to zero, which is definitely what we intended to do. Alright, so we have fixed that, and you'll see that it will now work perfectly. Our character will now work and walk in eight directions. Well, it's working. Ooh, it's working perfectly. 
So congratulations, you just made your first you made your first step in making an RPG with Dragon Drop. And if you like this video, well like it. But before you go, as I said, I'm going to tell you about the room area. So as much as I told you already that this is the room where you can do stuff, where you add stuff. Now I'm going to explain it in detail. These are the layers which you know about already. These are the things which are in the layer. This instance and this everything is just a advanced thing. I'll tell you that later on. This depth is also just another advanced thing. It's, it just stands for how deep the, the, the object is in this particular layer. This instance creation order stands for which instance will be created for the first time, like before another one. So if you have two instances and OBJ player is above the other one, then OBJ player will be created before the other one. These are the room settings, which are the most important thing in this area. There you have persistence, clear display buffer, which are just advanced. This is the property of your room. Let's change it to 480 by 240. You can see it is now smaller. If we change it to 180720, it's bigger. It's it is probably good to work with 120, uh, 1280, 720 in your games, or maybe higher than that. Here you have creation code and instance creation order. That's also a bit advanced. You have viewports and cameras, which are advanced, but I'm going to tell you a bit right now. V ports are basically the cameras and like you see how you go ahead in a person games and the camera follows the player, yeah. Those camera are called V ports. And here you are going to say to the game uh, to Game Maker Studio 2 what portion of the room should be shown and how big the window should be. You can you can adjust all of that in here. We are going to do that in the next video, probably. So, congratulations, you did something one for the first time. You can go ahead and try to add a background to this area. Just create a background as same as the same size of to the size of this room and set it here, the background sprite. You can change the color of your background from here and yeah, that's pretty much it. You cleared your first drag and drop. Uh, tutorial so if you like this video please like this video and uh, subscribe to me if you want to see more videos like this and in our next video we are going to uh, refine our code and commands which we did right here and also add some collision if we get time so bye guys see you later